This video is going to explain about the resistor, a simple component, but without one many circuits would not work. This will look at what a resistor is, examples of where it is used, and how to select an appropriate resistor, including the common resistor colour code for four band colour code. These various types of resistors, but what do they do? As their name suggests, they resist the flow of current. Let's see why that's so important with a little experiment. I'm using an LED here. One of the properties of an LED is that when it's in the forward direction, it offers very little resistance and so will allow a large current to flow through it. However, if too much current is able to flow, then it will be destroyed. This LED is connected directly across a 12 volt power supply. It's currently switched off, but when I turn it on, then a large current flows. You can see the LED light up very briefly and then it goes off. It's essentially been burnt out. That LED goes in the bin now and I'll continue with a new one. I did try and record the current flowing through the LED, but the readout of my power supply wasn't fast enough. I'm sure it was at least several hundred milliamps, certainly a lot more than the 120 milliamps maximum before the LED is damaged. If we now add a resistor in between the power supply and our new LED, the resistor can be on either the positive or negative side. Then it reduces the amount of current that flows through the LED. There is less current flowing, the LED lights up and it won't be damaged. This is what our circuit looks like. Looking at conventional current flow, we can follow the current from the positive end of the power supply to the negative end. It flows through the resistor, then the LED and then back to the power supply. I've used a 12 volt power supply here, which is a common voltage used in automation. But in hobby electronic circuits, we more commonly use 5 volts, commonly used on some Arduinos, or 3.3 volts, used for projects that interface with the GPIO ports on a Raspberry Pi, for instance. Resistors are measured in ohms, with the omega symbol. The value of the resistor can be as low as 0 ohms, essentially a wire in a resistor package, up to 100 mega ohms, or even higher. Some common resistor values are shown here. On diagrams, the resistor is often shown without the omega symbol and the letter R or unit prefix is placed instead of the decimal point. So as you can see, you've got 0R for 0 ohms, 470R for 470 ohms, and then when we get into the kilo ohms, it becomes 1K. If there's a decimal point in it, then that's where the letter goes, so 2K2. And then we have a 27 kilo ohms and a 1 mega ohm shown as such. To understand how to calculate the required resistor, you need to understand about Ohm's law. Fortunately, it's very easy to understand and it needs only basic maths to be able to work it out. Before we look at the formula, here is what's known as the Ohm's law triangle. It shows the relationship between the voltage, shown as V, the current, shown as I, and the resistance, shown as R. If you know two of the values, then you can work out the third. So taking the triangle, you hide the variable that you want to find, and the two remaining variables form the formula. So, if you want to know that the voltage, hide the letter V, and the formula is V equals I times R. If you want to know the current, and know the voltage and resistance, then hide the letter I, and you have a voltage divided by resistance. Finally, if you want to calculate the resistance, then hide the letter R, and it's the voltage divided by the current. One more thing is that whilst I mentioned that an LED has very low resistance, it does result in a voltage drop to cross it. This is a schematic diagram which shows that more clearly. The rectangle is the resistor, and the symbol below it represents the LED. With the resistor in series with the LED, we just subtract the voltage dropped across the LED, and we know the voltage across the resistor. The voltage dropped across the LED is given in the data sheets. A typical value for a red LED is 2 volts. So, with our 12 volt power supply and a red LED that drops 2 volts, the voltage across the resistor is 10 volts. This is the value for V to use in the Ohm's Law calculations. 
So now, using Ohm's law, the resistance is the voltage divided by the current. The current is again provided from the data sheet. And here's an example for a 5 mm LED. And this is a bright LED, so it has a forward current of around 20 milliamps. If you're using a standard LED, then you may use 10 milliamps instead, as that's more common. Uh, but look at the data sheet and find out what it says for that particular LED. So using Ohm's law, we need the voltage divided by the current. We have 10 volts divided by 20 milliamps, or 0 0.02 amps, which gives a resistance of 500 ohms. It's not a particularly common size resistor, so I've used a 470 ohm resistor. Because it would be almost impossible to have a resistor that matches every single value, then several electronic components are sold in terms of an E-series. These give common values of resistors, making it easier to have a stock of resistors that are used. The most common are E12, E24, E48 or E96. And the E12 series is this one here. And that's probably quite a good one if you're into hobby electronics and you want to get a set of resistors. You can see these on the table in Wikipedia. They use standard notation here. Uh, so you can multiply by a power of 10 to get the relevant values. The table is quite long. Here's just the first few rows. If we look up 500, then the E96 series gives us a value of 499 ohms or 511 ohms. However, if we wanted to stock all the E96 series, then there would be over 700 different value resistors. Typically for hobby projects, you may want to get just the E12 series, or more likely a subset of that, with just the more commonly used values. And this means that the nearest is either 470 ohms or 560 ohms. I used 470 as that is a commonly used value. One word of caution is that if you are calculating a resistor based on the maximum current allowed, then you may need to select the next value up rather than the nearest value. But I've just gone for the nearest value here because that should work fine. And as you can see here, then based on the use of a 470 ohm resistor, the total current is measured by the power supply is 90 milliamps. So that's perfect. Looking at through hole resistors, these are the types of resistors which you use in breadboard designs as well as hobby PCBs. And the resistors are normally color coded. Typically, there are four color bands across the resistor as shown in this example. There are three colors for the value followed by a gap before the fourth band, which is for the tolerance. This means you can see how to read the resistor with the significant values on the left. The first two bands indicate the significant figures. The first band is yellow, which is four. The next is violet, which is seven. And the third band is the multiplier. It's how many powers of 10 the value is multiplied by, or if you prefer, the number of zeros to add on to the end. It's shown in this column here. So if it was black, then it's 10 to the power zero. So you don't add any zeros. The value would just be 47. In this case, the band is brown, which is multiplied by 10 to the power one. And this adds one zero onto the end. So that gives us 470 ohms. The final band is the tolerance, in this case gold, which indicates it can be plus or minus 5%. So the actual value will be in the range 446.5 ohms to 493.5 ohms. Each resistor will also have a power rating. It's not normally indicated on the resistor itself, but you can normally get an idea by looking at the size. The quarter watt resistors tend to be the smallest through hole resistors and then one hot watt are quite large. And then the half a watt, which is a common size, fits somewhere in between the two. For most cases, we don't need a particularly high power resistor. If you do, then it suggests that energy is being wasted in the resistor. But if you have a high current going through a resistor, 
perhaps as low as only 100 milliamps, then you may want to make sure that you have an appropriate power rating of resistor to avoid this from happening. And this is a 19 ohm resistor with a 12 volt power supply. So it's taking about seven and a half watts, which is clearly more than it is designed for. This video has been based on fixed value resistors, but there are other resistors whose values change under certain conditions. A good example is a variable resistor or potentiometer. These have three pins and some kind of slider or rotor. The resistance across the outer pins is constant, but as the wiper is moved, the center terminal resistance is closer to one or the other. This allows the user to vary the resistance between the center pins and end pins. There are also other types of resistors whose properties change depending upon the environment around them. For example, thermistors, and this is an example shown here, whose resistance varies depending upon the temperature, or light dependent resistors such as this one, whose resistance varies based upon the amount of light. There are lots of other ways that resistors can be used, and I'll be adding more videos showing some of these configurations. Look out for my next video on resistors, and that will show the use of a voltage divider. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.